Hello, my dear students, and welcome to a final chapter or a final lecture in our PV Grid Connected course. Actually, in the previous uh, sections, we have demonstrated together a long story, starting from building a complete, or sorry, starting from building a, a solar cell or a photovoltaic cell, considering it's three, three generations, and we go through different blocks in the system, including DC-DC converter, DC-AC inverter, storage system, and a lot of stuff. We also go to the macroscopic system level consideration, the technical parameter of design. We also go to uh, a, a, another perspective, including economic analysis. Then we terminate. This was a complete techno-economic uh, visibility study, considering the whole system of a PV uh, system uh, under different uh, consideration, uh, including, um, for example, we consider the off-grid systems, the on-grid system, on-grid system was a diesel battery as a secondary grid uh, or off-grid with diesel with this different contribution. We consider different uh, alternative loads, uh, including second road bombs in petroleum and in oil and gas industry. We consider lighting loads and all these stuff. Today, I choose to terminate the course with a final lecture uh, to give some sort of focus or lighting on a very critical and important topic nowadays, which is the energy management and the energy auditing. I think if you already um, Google these terms, uh, either energy management or energy auditing, you'll find a lot of um, maybe startups, companies, also big companies, who, which are now considering these processes for buildings, for industrial uh, uh, buildings, for office buildings, for different types of loads. It's very huge and it's very significant and big topic to be considered in one, in one lecture, of course. So what we are going to do today is just making some sort of lighting on this type of energy auditing and energy management systems. In a very narrow case where we are going to consider lighting loads and how we can manage these lighting loads because lighting loads is some sort of a common loads that you can find in residential loads or residential uh, buildings, office buildings, industrial buildings, uh, a lot of buildings. So that's why we consider lighting loads, but in general, of course, you can um, mimic or you can uh, repeat the same model on different uh, type of loads with different perspectives. Of course, maybe for those who are going to consider energy auditing as a part of their next career, they will consider it more than uh, a more than an electrical perspective. They will consider also thermal storage and HVAC systems and a lot of uh, uh, other perspectives, not only from an electrical energy perspective as well. But as I mentioned, in our course, we will be very limited to give some sort of a very brief introduction about that, and maybe you can extend this to other uh, topics as well. So let's start together this uh, model or this energy management model to uh, have um, in this case. Okay, so perfect. So let's start the pointer and let's start this lecture. Okay, perfect. So. Introduction to energy management. I would say that introduction to energy management slash energy uh, energy auditing slash energy management. Okay. Let's start with a very um, brave discussion. I think it's, of course, uh, I, I, undoable to make it over a recording over YouTube, but let's assume that we have a discussion. Okay. So usually, I think all of you either on from a residential perspective or if you are operating some sort of a brief private business or whatever, you should, or you, I think you already monitor your electricity bills, which is a reflection or a direct reflection actually to your electricity consumption. And maybe the most critical question comes to your mind every time you see your energy uh, electricity bill, ele electrical energy bill, is how can I reduce this bill? How can I reduce my consumption? This is a very important troll, or this is a very important headline. I think most of you ask yourself this question, especially if you are considering a, a, a private business and the electricity bill considered as a, 
a concrete part of your running coast. So reducing this element will impact your prof profit profile and your business model in general. So this is becomes a, an important question to be answered. And in this manner, the process of energy auditing starts to appear. How we can audit energy, how we can manage energy, and the target, of course, is to reduce the energy consumption. Usually, when we implement this energy auditing process, we implement it in three phases. The first is to analyze uh, these data is to analyze your energy consumption. You have to list your energy consumption. You have to analyze this energy consumption in order to tackle where I can interrupt to make a change. A second is to search for methods or maybe in other words, to, to search for solutions. How can I reduce? So for example, I consider that my HVAC system or my air conditioning system consumes a lot of money. This is the analysis. This is the result of the analysis. Then what is the methods? How can I do this? So maybe you can do this by replacing this air conditioning uh, system with another one with lower uh, energy conversion. Maybe at least most of you now hear about this DC in, inverted air, air conditioning systems with less power consumption or whatever it is. Maybe the solution is to somehow restructure the building if possible to make some sort of airflow so that you can uh, reduce your need for an air conditioning or whatever. So this is the methods. And then goes to the third step, which is start to design, implement, and install your solution, your message, your service, or whatever. These are the three perspectives or the three levels how you are going to consider this process from starting from making some sort of analysis to searching for methods to go to the implementation phase where you can implement these methods. And herein, there is an extremistic variation in terms of methods. So, as we will see later on in this lecture, some of these methods are zero cost, zero cost methods. Some are medium cost, some are very high cost. Some of these methods are with limited impact, so it will impact your energy in energy consumption with 15, 10%. And some other methods may have a very high impact on your system with 50% or more reduction in, in consumption and of course in cost. So this, as a very uh, tunable process that can vary. And the key parameter here is the applicability and the lo located budget for us. For example, in the previous example, I just mentioned a few seconds ago, I mentioned that I can restructure the building. Some, sometimes this is impossible to restructure a building. So this is a, sometimes this, 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 is, uh, this is not a solution, actually. Sometimes maybe in order to make a replacement for any equipment, you need a huge amount of money, which is out of budget for your case. So you are, you are going to use a low cost energy management solution in order to perform your energy auditing. So this will fluctuate based on a lot of issues. But what you can see now is we are doing a pre-sizing process. So if we say that all we have done together in this course is some sort of a PV sizing process, we are sizing a PV system that can sustain energy for a certain specific load under a certain environmental condition and the location conditions. What we are doing now in this lecture is a pre-sizing process. We are considering the load itself. We are considering, is it possible to reduce the energy consumption during using uh, or used by this load? So it's a process that should be implemented in advance to the PV sizing process is to ask your question is, is this really an optimized load? May I impact or optimize the operation of this load so that the energy consumption is reduced and then my PV requirement will be directly reduced in consequence. So this is the task 
where we are doing energy measurement. And that's why we consider energy measurement as a part of a PV sizing process. Maybe from a technical point of view, it's independent. Maybe even from a professional unit point of view, you can ask two different guys for that. You can have an energy management or an, an, an energy editor or uh, uh, auditor for, 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 for the energy auditing, and you can have an another guy for a renewable energy management. But by the end of the day, the impact or the reflection of the first process, which is the energy auditing and the, and, and the energy management, will, 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 will definitely have an impact, a direct impact on the second process, which is the PV sizing process. Herein, we will consider a case where we are going to utilize or we are going to optimize lighting loads in a building. We consider a, a lecture who in our university building as an example for that. So this is a typical running model for a lecture hall some years ago, where we have a fluorescent light sources to operate or to light lecture halls. Usually, so usually we have a 80 watt uh, unit of fluorescent light source and we have, I'm sorry, uh, huh. and we have what in, on average 12 unit per lecture hall and in or in, in total, we have a power consumption of about 87.6 kilo kilowatts in our building, in our building utilization. This reflects, while considering normal working hours and days, this reflects about 788.4 kilowatt hour per day of operation. Of course, considering all lecture holes in the building. I'm sorry. So this is the load to be optimized in this case. As I just mentioned here, if you go to the first uh, portion of this model, reduce energy usage or you use energy consumption, you will find here that we have different alternatives for that. It can be done using up load optimization or process optimization to optimize or in between quotation to minimize your your users, your users for this load. It can be done with some sort of load reduction to, 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 to reduce the amount of uh, working hours, to, to reduce the amount of lighting and so on. Or it can be done by what we can call equipment upgrading. But please take care of my dear students that whenever you consider an equipment upgrading, you are now considering what we call an additional extra cost for your solution. So this extra cost should appear in your techno-economic study as a part of your capex in this case, because this replacement will be reflected on, us, on, on the financial or in the economic system with an extra payment to be applied on the capex. That's why we consider this as a uh, extra equipment or extra cost for that process. So here, added cost should be considered. We will see this later on. So back to the question is, we need to optimize this load. We need to see how we can minimize the energy consumption related to this load. Basically, the most Zero cost way of that is to turn off light whenever it is not utilized. Maybe you can see this as a trivial solution, but going to analysis and going to literature, you can find that this is a very uh, this is a very usable. Uh, way, or this is a, a very uh, significant way to reduce energy. In some buildings, the monitoring on the load utilization, I mean, just to turn off the load when it's not used, this load can might be a lighting load, can, might be an air conditioning load, might be whatever, any computers or whatever. In some buildings, and using to or, or referring to a commercial energy 
uh, auditing reports, you can find that this trivial step may impact up to 30% in energy reduction in, and in energy consumption, I mean, a reduction in energy consumption, which will have a very big contribution on energy saving and uh, economical issues related to buildings. That's why it's a very trivial tra uh, uh, step or it's a very trivial phase of energy optimization. However, believe it or not, it has a very great impact on the system. A second process is to start to interrupt the system itself. The word which is equipment upgrading, here we can use to start to see is the load you are utilizing is the optimum load in terms of energy saving? Can I get the same output, which is here a light intensity? Can I get the same light intensity using different loads with minimized or with, with reduced energy consumption or wattage? For example, in lighting, this is a very good question to be asked because as you know, the technology of lighting is upgrading day by day. So for example, here, alternating, alternating fluorescent lamps with LEDs, from one hand, you reach nearly the same light intensity, maybe better. As you can see here, the distribution of light intensity among a lecture hall, on the right-hand side, you have a LED, and on the left-hand side, you have a fluorescent lamp. And you can see that the LED will result with a better energy or a better light intensity, or what we call lux with respect to the fluorescent side. And on the other hand, when we turn into wattage and power energy consumption, a unit in a fluorescent lamp consume 80 watt, while a unit in a LED consumes 42 watts. Per lecture hall, I mean per fixed area, you use 12 units for a fluorescent while you use only eight for uh, LED, which results in minimizing the total number of units you are using per volume, and this will directly impact it. the cost. For example, here, this bowling will save nearly seven, seven K, 17 k Egyptian pound per Egyptian pound per month by only alternating fluorescent lamp or replacing fluorescent lamp to be LEDs or LEDs. Of course, this analysis should include also the replacement cost. It's not included here. This should be appear as a part of the total forecasting or total cash flow in the building among a project, which is maybe five years, 20 years or whatever. But you can see here the direct impact of using a lower energy consumption modules with or loads with respect to a relatively higher one. And how can equipment upgrading can impact the energy saving in a building? Of course, this is not the upper limit. You can go more and more with energy auditing and with energy management. For example, one of the very intelligent way now in operating buildings under the word of a smart building or what I can call here smartening your building is using sensors. So for example, instead of instead of counting on people or on uh, manual utilization or manual optimization of lighting so that everyone should turn off the light when he go outside the lecture hall or she goes outside the lecture hall or whatever, you can make this process in an automated and a controlled way using, for example, a motion detector, detector, detection sensors. So whenever there is a motion, you will have a, a, a lighting on. Whenever there is no motion, there is no one, then the light will be turned off. So this is one, one, one more step towards smartening your system. Again, this again reflected again on that uh, uh, cash flow studies because this smartening will be reflected in terms of an added cost in the capex and this should be managed to see if this is appropriate solution or not another way and another very intelligent way 
Usually this can be implemented for new buildings when you are going to use more and more utilize artificial light, uh, sorry, uh, utilize uh, natural sunlighting. I think the, the label is, is the label here is not correct. It's not, it's minimizing artificial lighting uh, uh, utilization. So using more and more uh, uh, sunlight or natural lighting in powering your your system. So here, here one of the aspects is maximizing the light coming from the sun. So minimizing the lighting, uh, the artificial lighting, and then minimizing the lighting loads. However, this is maybe somehow um, um, in a trade-off with the air conditioning system, because whenever you have the glass buildings, this can, uh, from one hand, uh, maximize the utilization for uh, natural sunlight, but from the other hand, maybe have some bad impact on the uh, required air conditioning uh, systems that should be managed. So you have to have some sort of uh, thermal isolation as well, or some sort of natural uh, cool uh, cooling systems or whatever in order to minimize as well the air conditioning system. But this is again, one of the aspects. More and more toward buildings itself. One of the very important keywords nowadays is what's called the PIPV or the Building Integrated Photovoltaics. I think those who are working in architecture as well as those who are working in photovoltaics are very passionate with that. How you can maximize the integration of your solar cells or your, your photovoltaics in buildings so that you can gain the maximum energy possible from these photovoltaics. In my case, I can tell you some sort of an, a, a, a trial or an investigation where we work in what's called a, a semi-transparent solar cells. In semi-transparent solar cells, you can use your glass buildings or your glass windows as a solar cell. So it's not only a window. From one hand, it's a, an additional source of gaining more and more energy. And from the other hand, you can use it as an ultraviolet protection for your building. So you can get rid out of these ultraviolet radiations come from the sun as solar cells are usually an ultraviolet reflector. So that's why you make an additional credit to your smart and green building. So this is a very typical example for using semi-transparent solar cells in PIPV or in, in the uh, building integrated photovoltaic systems. Here is one of our publication targeting that, where we consider the uh, utilization of both. Utilization of natural lighting from one hand and the utilization from for semi-transparent solar cell in a typical building. As you can see, this is a typical shopping mall building. In this shopping mall, the annual lighting loads in a standard way, assuming that we don't make any smart architecture in order to utilize light, utilize um, a natural lighting. So in, in a standard way, the, the lighting loads were about 87.6 megawatt hour per year. This is the annual uh, utilize or the annual energy user for a lighting, for a lighting in this shopping mall building on one of the shopping mall buildings. So the first thing to, to, to monitor is my routine is this number. So after using a semi-transparent glass uh, interfacing in the building, so you are utilizing some sort of, because this semi-transparent solar cell will permit some of the light from the, solar, from, the, from the outside solar to enter the building. So we are indirectly, you are utilizing natural lighting. That's why this 87.6 is dropped to 55.7 or 69 typically, a megawatt per year. So it's something like maybe 40 or 30 something percent reduction by utilizing this natural lighting. So you can see here the impact of utilizing natural lighting in uh, designing or in architecturing buildings. In addition, now you can start using your PIPV concepts, which may be in two forms either to implement photovoltaic systems in the roof of your building that can capture around 99 megawatt hour per year in this case, or the semi-transparent solar cells itself mounted in the glass windows of the building 
will also produce 44.5 megawatt hour per year. So you have nearly about 143 megawatt of energy production per year, either coming, coming from the photovoltaic on the roof or coming from the semi-transparent solar cells in the surrounding glasses. You only need 55 mega per year for lighting. That means that you have now an excess energy of about 87 megawatt hour per year that can be fed onto the grid or can be utilized in other loads, um, for example, normal sockets, power sockets, air conditioning, or whatever. And here you can see the impact of having what's called PIPV or building integrated photovoltaics and also the impact of load optimization where you optimize your, your load by uh, including or by utilizing natural lighting in your building to make to maximize natural lighting and minimize artificial lighting, as you can see. This is, I think, a good example where you can see different uh, types of energy management, including using LEDs instead of a fluorescent lamp, using natural lighting in addition to minimize that artificial lighting, using photovoltaic in the roof, using even photovoltaics or semi-transparent photovoltaics in the windows. So this is a complete model. However, as I usually mention, in order to have a complete model, we have to consider, in addition, the economical part. You can visit this publication. You can find it in my uh, Google Scholar or even in my Scopus. You can visit this publication to see the complete image of a techno-economic vis visibility study considering different alternatives. And as is usually said, there is nothing optimum all the time. The optimization will definitely vary from one case to another, from one location to another, from one environmental condition to another. That's all, not only for this lecture, that's all for the whole module of a BV grid connected system. I hope that by the end of this lecture, you have gained some knowledge in this uh, uh, process of uh, photovoltaic uh, system sizing, uh, manufacturing, uh, utilization, different components of systems and all this stuff. Maybe we will add one more lecture, more toward the uh, softwareing and using PV SAST and uh, in sizing PV uh, systems. This will be an, uh, an, an added lecture, maybe in the uh, YouTube playlist later on. But technically wise or theoretically wise, I can say that this is the terminating lecture for this module. Thank you very much for your uh, concentration among the uh, 15 years, uh, 15 weeks of this uh, course. Thank you for your concentration and hope we can meet again in another uh, module maybe later on. Thank you very much and see you later on.